One of the most awesome things I've experienced here, and it's probably one of the most awesome things I've ever experienced in my life, is that people from all over the world being able to unite through the love of Christ and just being around each other. All the people are great, and I make me and a lot of new friends. I signed up for swimming today for free time. Doing all the activities like the mud war, you kind of get to be a kid. I love paddleboarding too. One and a half days here, I like knew everybody. Like they were, I would like call them my family. Welcome back to the vlog. In 2007, I started coming. I was 10 years old, and I came for about five years consecutively. Thinking about how happy I was and the memories that I held on to during my time as a camper, I knew that I wanted to help facilitate whatever it takes to have that for someone or someone else. I we go down to the Green Cathedral, which is like a place in the woods. We're surrounded by nature and the place that our Christ created. Here you feel accepted by everybody and you can connect and meet new people and connect to God. What are the truths he's giving you, right? What are the names he's speaking over you? You're just like in the moment. My favorite moment that I've experienced probably be solo time in the worship services. Okay, so we're gonna take our 10 minutes on our own. Today, uh, I asked God if he was here and I said, if you're here, then shake the trees and the leaves started shaking. We can all um, worship what we came here for, to, uh, for Jesus, and we all come together a lot. When someone says something that you're thinking too, it's like, well, I guess I can't be the only person thinking that. I feel that it's gonna affect me in like the way that I can, that I view people from other cultures. There's a joy to be around. They're extremely funny. All the people here. You're gonna make new friends and try out new things. If I were to give them one piece of advice, it should just be yourself. Come on, come quick. Because it's fun. Kids leave here looking forward to the next time they come back. feel that that night and then come back next year and remember what happened there, it leaves a mark.
like the first on roads and winter comes for us all know how nature acquaints us with the nature of patience like a seed in the snow it's I've been buried to grow and for your promises loyal from sea to sequoia and I I believe that my season will come Lord, I think of your love Like the long winter sun And as I gaze I am blinded In the light of your bright
Welcome to Wesley Church Online. My name is Brian Podowski, and I would like to thank you for joining us for worship. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent, a 40-day season of self-examination, repentance, and preparation for the coming of Easter. We are continuing in this Lenten worship series titled, Called to More. This series explores the actions, habits, and systems that separate us from God, and looks to the cross of Jesus to discover that we are called to do so much more. Today, our lay minister, Michelle Biggs, will be preaching on the title, There Is More. During worship, I invite you to connect with our church family via the chat box to the right of your screen. There are three things to do there. One, it's never been easier to invite someone to worship now that we've been worshiping online. Click the invite button and bring someone to church with you today, or send them this link now, wesley.online.church. That's Wesley dot online dot church and if you are watching this on youtube be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and then share this video with someone god is bringing to your thoughts two if you're new with us be sure to fill out the i'm new here card and pastor james will reach out to you sometime this week and guide you in how to grow deeper in your faith three finally throughout the service be sure to share your joys and your concerns there and we'd love to pray for you today. Remember, God loves you, and so do we. So come and join me in the call to worship and enter together in God's holy and healing presence. Taking part safely from home, staying a safe, masked distance in church, we are reminded of that promise. God's love endures forever. Despite our pandemic fatigue, in spite of the grumbling it inspires, the light of Christ shines in our lives. Unable to sing when we wonder if we have the energy to continue to care for others, we are taught new songs by the Spirit who encourages us to not give up. Please join me in the opening prayer. For far too long, fear has coiled itself around our hearts, slowly trying to squeeze out all our love and compassion. But you release its grip on us, and wrap us in a comforting shawl of grace. Good and generous God, we give you thanks. We see weary slowly crawling towards us, slowly ratting their tails with all which overwhelms, but you pick them up and set them free in the wilderness of forgetfulness. As you take us by the hand, lead us to the table of hope, where we can join our sisters and brothers. We give you thanks. Amen. There's nothing worth more that can ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. In your presence, Lord. Oh, I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Of 
the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and
Here are a few announcements this week. Friends Wesley Church will be holding simplified outdoor worship services on Sunday at 9 a.m. at the first Sunday of each month starting April 4th, Easter Sunday. Bring your own chairs and masks and there will be communion offered in pre-packaged disposable cups. And if you are not ready to join in person yet, that's okay. Our online worship services will continue on every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. For those of you who are ready to join in person, be sure to mark your calendars for April 4th, Easter Sunday at 9 a.m. If you want to know more about any of this, you can always contact the church office at office at wumcsp.org. Please join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This scripture reading comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind, and if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A year later, the abnormal practices become normal. The separation expected, the teeth grinding silence never ending. Numbered to the isolation, numbered to the mediocrity, numbered to the chaos. Is this it? Is this how our lives are meant to be? No. We are meant for abundance. We are designed into love. We are made to see justice and we are called into freedom. We are called to more. Hello church, I am Michelle Biggs and I am so glad you could join us for worship today. We are continuing our Lenten series titled, Called to More. Each Sunday during Lent, we have been wrestling with understanding sin and how it affects our relationship with God. A title for today's message is, There is More. When life gets challenging, we have a choice to either fall back into the sin that is so enticing and easy for us, or to persevere and trust that when we follow Christ, we will live into even more than we have ever imagined. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So last, this last year has been very difficult for all of us, and we are coming up on the one year anniversary of closing the church and moving to a recorded worship service. This led to many challenges for groups meeting at the church. Laura Conrad and I were challenged to change how we met for youth group, moving all our weekly meetings to Zoom and trying to find activities on Zoom that would interest our youth as well as encourage them to come together every week. Then there was Sunday school. How do we connect with our Sunday school children? At first, I was putting together a weekly email with a short video and Bible verse with some color, coloring pages. Then after meeting with Pastor James and Braden, we decided on a new program, which allowed us to email to our children a short activity, a great video with a Bible story, and questions for parents to sit with their children to watch and discuss. Braden and I started personalizing the emails by recording a short introduction and an ending to the Bible story. This worked out great but I was feeling that we were still not connecting with our Sunday school children. So we decided to meet once a month on Zoom. The once a month Zoom meeting was so successful that we decided to do Sunday school on Zoom every Sunday. At the same time, we decided to move youth group from Sunday evenings to Friday evenings. You have no idea how quickly Friday comes every week when you have an activity to prepare. These changes all started in the month of February. Along with all the work for church, I was working full time, and then my boss asked me to mentor a new staff member and teach him about home care. This required a little more time in my day. But that's not all. 
For the last year, I have been working on my certification to become a certified lay minister, and at the beginning of February, the Greater New Jersey Board of Discipleship emailed me and asked if they could meet me on February 18th regarding my certification. Of course, I said yes. They emailed me questions that they would be asking so I could be prepared for this meeting. Two days before I am supposed to meet with the Board of Discipleship, at the same time as all the youth and Sunday school changes were occurring, I'm driving home from work and thinking about all the things I needed to do that week. Ash Wednesday Zoom meeting, the meeting with the Board of Discipleship on Thursday, then youth group on Friday. My mind started with, what am I doing with youth group this week? I still have to put together my Sunday school lesson for Sunday, and I still need to prepare for my meeting with the Board of Discipleship. I could feel the anxiety building up, starting in my stomach and moving into my chest. Then I started thinking, maybe getting certified as a lay minister wasn't a good idea right now. Maybe I should call them and postpone the meeting until maybe next year. This is not what God wants me to do, maybe. All these thoughts were running through my brain. We all struggle daily with the things we need to accomplish. Going to work, grocery shopping, cleaning the house, making dinner, getting the children to school, or making sure they are doing their schoolwork on the computer every day. It's a never-ending cycle, and many times we don't have time or can't find time to fit God into our list of things we need to accomplish. We are so exhausted at the end of the day that we fall into bed so we can get up and start all over again tomorrow. And then when life throws us a curveball that we didn't expect, we try to fix it by ourselves. Pastor James has been using the paradigm of good news, bad news, good news in his sermons. When life gets challenging, we find ourselves in the bad news category. We fall into unhealthy habits and we turn to coping mechanisms that don't really work for the long term. We try to fix the problem by ourselves and we fall further and further away from God. This is the bad news. So how do we manage our busy lives and what can we do to break the cycle of sin and move into the light of the good news? Let's look at some bad coping mechanisms and how God can help us turn them around for our good news. The first bad coping mechanism, we suffer in silence. Many times we think we can handle things on our own, even if it means pushing ourselves to the point where we can't cope and we break down or we're ignoring the elephant in the room. God did not intend for us to live and work alone. God provided Adam with a mate, Eve. God created us to live in community. The early Christians lived, worked, and worshiped together. We have a whole congregation of people who are willing to help if you are willing to ask. The second bad coping mechanism is negative emotions. One way we cope, or not really cope, is to cry, become angry with ourselves, or blame others. Don't despair. Just because things are difficult doesn't mean that God is not there. God is present even when we are not aware of his presence. Psalm 121, verse 1 to 2 says, I lift my eyes to the hills from where my help come. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And bad coping mechanism number three, I want to change right now. Our problems don't always get solved overnight. Sometimes we have to wait and be patient. I'm a physical therapist and I find people who have been injured or have had surgery expect that once the cause of the injury has been fixed, they should be better and able to return to normal life. Our bodies don't heal that quickly, and I have to reassure them that it will take time for healing to occur. The same is true for hard times. It's hard to be patient. We want solutions to happen right away. The best coping mechanism for us to learn today is found in our scripture reading, Mark chapter one, Verse 35 says, In the morning, while it was still dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Jesus went out alone to pray. The only way to cope with a busy schedule, stress, and the feeling that we are all alone is to take a step back and spend time with God in prayer. Jesus, Jesus models this more than 20 times in the New Testament. Taking time to pray may seem difficult at times. There is so much to accomplish in a day. Where do I fit prayer in that time? The Bible tells us Jesus went out to a deserted place to pray. 
After a busy day of preaching and healing, Jesus gets up early in the morning to find a quiet place to connect with God. Jesus knew that without spending time with God and renewing his spirit, he could not do the work that had been set before him to do. Like Jesus, we need to connect with our creator regularly, the God who created us in his image, the God who will renew our spirit so we can do the work that he has put out before us, it is important for us to find time to spend with him. Regular prayer can help us break our habit of sin and allow God's redeeming work to start us towards better habits. Daily prayer can make a difference in your day. Prayer can be healing and rejuvenating. Prayer guides you in changing your life situation from the bad news paradigm to the good news paradigm. Making time in your day to pray helps you build a closer relationship with God who created you for something more. Change is not easy, and making a decision to set aside time to pray can be challenging. In Philippians 3, 12 to 16, Paul encourages us to keep going, press forward. Verse 12 says, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has, had made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and starting forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Paul admi admits in these verses that he has not reached the goal of making Jesus the complete center of his life yet. He realizes that faith is a work in progress and that we are always at risk of slipping back into unhealthy habits and sin. Paul teaches us not to look back. We cannot change the past, but we need to move forward looking up to Jesus, who washes away our sin through his salvation. John Wesley believed that God's grace was so much greater than our sin and that the only way out of sin is to trust in the grace given to us by Jesus through his death and resurrection. As Methodists, we are constantly striving towards perfection, guided by the Holy Spirit through the work of God's sanctifying grace. The Reverend Gary Henderson of the United Methodist Communications writes, sanctifying grace helps us to know that we are getting better. We are on a journey as people of faith. We are reminded that we are under construction it helps us to love God, to love neighbor, to love the other, but importantly also to love ourselves. We are a work in pro progress as we strive for a deeper relationship with God through Jesus Christ. When we're in a good relationship with God, we create new habits that help us live into who we are in Christ. So what do you need to change in your own life to be focused on Christ and stop focusing on the shame and guilt of your sin? What is the next small step in your pursuit of a godly life? As I was driving home that day in the middle of February, stuck in my head about all the things I needed to accomplish that week, I was causing myself severe anxiety, not knowing if I should pursue the Certified Lay Minister program or quit. Even though I have felt called to this over the last few years and have put so much time into this, I was thinking about postponing it. Maybe I shouldn't pursue the certification process. I was thinking about giving up. But I enjoy doing these things at Wesley. When I started driving home that day, I had turned on the radio to a Christian radio station, something I don't usually do because I need to follow my GPS. And if I listen to the radio, I forget to listen to my GPS and I miss turns. As I was causing myself more and more anxiety with my thoughts, I hear a song come on the radio. And the first line of that song was, have you ever been praying? It caught my attention, so I listened closer. The beginning of this song titled, Haven't Seen It Yet by Danny Gokey continued, have you been praying and you still have no answers? Have you been pouring out your heart for so many years? Have you been hoping that things would have changed by now? Have you cried all the faith you have through so many years? 
Don't forget the things that he has done before. And remember, he can do it all once more. I was reminded that I didn't have to be anxious about my decisions. If God has called me to these tasks, God will bring me through it. All I needed to do was spend some time in prayer to refresh my soul and renew my strength to be able to do the work that I have felt called to do. Lucky for me, I had planned to take Thursday off. I was able to spend time in prayer as well as prepare for my meeting with the Board of Discipline and had extra time to plan for youth group. Brothers and sisters, there is power in knowing Jesus as your personal savior. There is redemption knowing that we don't have to fall back to our old habits and our old sinful ways when life becomes challenging. When we put our trust in Jesus, we will know that we are not alone. Sin is always with us, and it will always try to trick us into falling into old habits instead of trusting in Jesus. We need to create new habits that keep us focused on Jesus. So what healthy habit is Jesus calling you into? What do you need to change in your own life to be focused on Christ? We have three more weeks of Lent until Easter Sunday. If you haven't given up something or chosen to do something to make Lent more meaningful, setting aside time for prayer is a great option. The first step is making time for prayer. We can always find time to scroll through Facebook or watch our favorite movie on TV. Isn't spending time with God more important? To get started, choose a specific time of the day that you would regularly spend time in prayer and start with just 10 to 15 minutes. You can even set a timer if you need to. You can always increase the time if you want. You can start with just being quiet and listening for God. For ideas on what to pray for, you can use the acronym ACTS. A is for adoration or praising God. C is for confession, asking God for forgiveness for your sins. T is for thanksgiving, thanking God for all that he has done for you. And S is for supplication, bringing your needs and worries to God. Pray for people on your prayer list and pray for yourself. God loves it when you spend time in prayer. Prayer helps you build a stronger relationship with Jesus and as long, and as we learn to trust in the power of the Spirit, we will see that we are being led into a fuller life and we can build healthier habits and become the people God created us to be. No more bad habits in response to crisis. Go to God in prayer and you will find comfort and peace in a God who loves you and wants you to know you are called to more. Amen. This day, we admit that we have limited ourselves and the potential within us because we doubt that we are enough. This day, we claim that who we are in this moment is exactly who God wants us to use to further the kingdom. As we give today, we pray to claim that we are not our sin, but a redeemed people called to perfection. If you are prepared to give, there are three ways that you can give today. You can mail a check to our church at 1500 Plainfield Ave, South Plainfield, New Jersey, 07080. You can give online at wumcsp.org slash give, or you can give through the Tithely app. On behalf of Wesley Church, I want to thank you for your gifts. Because of our faithfulness, we can continue to be God's hands and feet to our Huron community and world. Please join me in the offering prayer. God of our salvation, as we give these offerings to you, we give ourselves to you also, recognizing that in you we live and breathe. Thank you that we are new creatures in Christ, that our paths are not our identity, and that grace still abounds. We bring these gifts to you, sowing seeds that this message of hope and salvation might go beyond these four walls through us, your church. In your son's name, amen. A couple of months ago, my mother asked me, Steve, what can I do with my spare change in COVID? I usually feed the cow at church. This brought up a lonely image of a poor ceramic cow in the back of our sanctuary, all alone and hungry. In the last year, no one has visited her and fed her the coins she needed to do her job. For those of you who don't know, the cow's job is to help 
feed and sustain people through the Heifer International Charitable Fund. Heifer International's mission is to end hunger and poverty while caring for the earth. For more than 75 years, they have provided livestock and environmentally sound agricultural training to improve the lives of those who struggle daily for reliable sources of food and income. They currently work in 21 countries, including the United States, to help families and communities become self-reliant by providing a range of livestock, trees, seeds, and training. One of Heifer International's fundamental concepts at the heart of their sustainable community development philosophy is to pass on the gift. Every family who receives an animal must pass on one or more of that animal's offspring, along with training and the skills to support them, and they give these to other families in needs. This unique approach creates a ripple effect that transforms lives and communities. Recipients build new levels of self-confidence and fulfillment as they become donors themselves. Even if we can't be here to physically feed the cow, we can still support this wonderful charity remotely. Over the next couple of weeks, if this cause speaks to you as it does to me, please consider making a donation marked for Heifer International. Every gift you receive from God, no matter the size, will multiply His work when you pass it on to someone in need.
now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you and go with you every step of the way. Know that the amazing God who created you and our Lord Jesus Christ who redeems you and the Holy Spirit that sustains you goes with you now and forever. Amen. I'm so glad that you joined us for worship this week, and I'm so thankful once again for Michelle Biggs for the amazing sermon. Uh, just know that, you know, uh, our church is not just about worshiping here, but we believe that disciples know God through worship and then we grow together in small groups and then we serve the world in the mission field. So uh, you are here worshiping with us. I invite you once again to consider joining a small group, joining a small group at our website, wumcsp.org slash small groups. And from there, you will join a community where you can grow in your faith, go deeper in your faith and actually be sent out in a meaningful way to make a difference in the world. You are children of God. You are beloved by God. And I know that this is a pathway that God is calling all of us to do. So join us. And I hope that you will join us next week in our worship service on Sundays at 1030 and 1. Until then, know that God loves you, and so do we. Take care.